It's the halfway point of the season, so it's time to do the mid-year All-Australian team for 2023. Just for context on how this team was created, I've decided to go with two traditional wingmen instead of playing other midfielders uh, in those positions. In defence, I've gone with two key defenders, an intercepting defender, and then three general defenders. And in the forward line, I've gone with three key forwards, a midfielder at half forward, and then two general forwards. And on the bench, there's three midfielders and a defender. As always, there are many players that are close but just haven't been selected in my team for a variety of reasons. But I'm not going to go into the detail of that in this video. I'm just going to focus on why I've picked the 22 players that I have picked. Starting off in defence, I've got Charlie Ballard, who's been integral in the Suns' defence and improvement this year. He's really had a breakout year. He's sixth in the competition in intercept possessions a game, and he also averages four and a half intercept marks a game. My fullback is Liam Jones. This was a very uh, close call, but he's held together the poor Bulldogs defense all year really, especially through their key defensive posts with Bruce, Keith, uh, and others swapping regularly. He can lock down on his opponent, but he also can come off and intercept when needed. My smaller defender is McGrath. He doesn't put up the numbers uh, like others, but he's probably the best two-way offensive and defensive uh, small defender in the league. He averages 22 disposals a game at 82% efficiency, and he's uh, almost at 400 metres gained a game. So not only does he take the best small forward from the opposition, but he's given Essendon a great rebound out of defence with his run and carry. To the half back line, I've got uh, Jack Sinclair. Now he has had a dual defensive and midfield role. He's played midfield, especially later in games and when the Saints have needed him. But he's provided great uh, pace and burst uh, throughout the season from both positions. He provides drive. And he's also another midfielder that can roll through the Saints team. He's averaged 28 possessions a game and has had match winning performances, uh, most notably against the Giants when he kicked two goals and basically uh, won them the game, especially in the last quarter. Uh, Darcy Moore is my centre-half back. He's also the captain of my team. Uh, Collingwood have one of the best defences in the league and he's the main reason. He's fourth in average intercepts a game at 8.8 .8, and he's top 20 in rebounds. So not only are you getting a player that can uh, lock down his opponent intercept the ball but he also can give you drive so he basically does everything you would want a center half back to do and next to him is his teammate Nick Dacos uh, he's been just about the best player in the competition he's first in total disposal so no one's had the ball more than him he's also kicked 11 goals in a dual defender and midfield role but he's also started forward at, at times in the season and drifted in the midfield basically playing as like a free roam play. So he can play anywhere in the game. Uh, his kicking is just about the best in the competition. And although he doesn't win the contested ball and clearance like other players, it really doesn't matter because when the players feed him the ball out the stoppage and in space, there's no one better in the competition. Moving into the midfield, we start on the first wing. And I've gone with Josh Dacos. He's been a mainstay on the wing for Collingwood this season. He's creative and smart. And he averages 25 disposals a game, three and a half clearances, and he's kicked nine goals, which is quite fantastic production from a wingman, especially in this day and age. The centre position, I have Marcus Bontempelli. He's top 10 in contested possessions a game, top five in clearances per game, and top three in tackles per game. It's been another outstanding season from the Bont. He's kept his class while adding to his contested game, especially with the departure of Josh Dunkley. The other wingman is Nick Martin. He's had a very consistent season for Essendon and he's a very damaging player. Six and a half score involvements a game with nine goals. He's great offensive output from a wingman. The ruckman in my team is Tim English. He averages 20 disposals a game, 28 hitouts and five tackles. He's the complete ruckman in the AFL. He leads ruckman for intercept possessions and intercept marks and he's also kicked seven goals this season. So not only does he cover the middle of the ground well, but he also can get forward and get back. The first on-baller in this team is Zach Butters. He's had a breakout season and currently leads the Coaches Association votes and probably the Brownlow medal. 
His pace is electric. He's tough inside but has a tremendous outside game. 41 disposals and two goals against Melbourne is probably the best individual performance of the season. Alongside Butters is Jordan Dawson. He was moved into the midfield after round three and has not disappointed. Him and Rory Laird have been a dynamic duo in the Adelaide midfield, with Dawson's kicking a standout. He averages 5.3 inside 50s a game with seven score involvements and has career-high numbers in clearances and contested possessions. Moving on to the forward line, this was probably the most difficult part of the team to pick. At half forward, I've gone with Christian Petrarca as a mid-forward. He's top 10 in contested possessions, has kicked 11 goals and averages 6 clearances a game. He's been important for Melbourne, especially with Clayton Oliver missing lately and has had another excellent season so far. My centre half forward is Jeremy Cameron. He had a blistering start to the season and although he has slowed down recently, he's still averaging 18 disposals a game with 7 marks. He's unique as he can get up the ground and is very difficult to stop. He's equal second in the Coleman race with 38 goals. Toby Green is the other half forward. He's missed two games this year but has been unbelievable again. He's kicked 32 goals and has been a match winner all season long for the Giants. Best seen in games against the Cats and Swans. I've decided to go with another key forward in the forward line with Tex Walker. Now his recent 10 goal haul against West Coast did help him get in but he has still been fantastic all season long. He's kicked 38 goals and his top 20 in score involvements and his field kicking is such a unique uh, aspect of his game, especially for key forwards. Charlie Kerno is the full forward. Although it's been a disappointing season for Carlton, Kerno has been fantastic. His 40 goals so far lead the league and he's second in contested marks a game and he's top 10 in marks taken inside 50. The final position in the forward line belongs to Charlie Cameron. He's the league's best small forward and he's continued on his ways this season. He's kicked a remarkable 34 goals, and his speed makes him simply unstoppable, especially when he gets in the open field. Moving to the interchange, we have Zach Merritt. He was named Essendon captain at the start of this year, and has shown outstanding leadership. He's a well-rounded midfielder, as he's seventh in the AFL for pressure acts, and he's still averaging 28 disposals a game. Although he isn't starting on my field, he's currently my vice captain. Next, we have Richmond midfielder Tim Taranto. It's been another very strong season for Taranto. He's top 10 in clearances per game and top 20 in contested possessions. He's kept his strong tackling ability and recently he's kicked a lot of goals and his tally is up for 12 for the season. Rory Laird has yet again had another consistent season for Adelaide. He has the inside grunt that all teams want and he's second in tackles per game. Just about the most consistent midfielder in the AFL and gets the job done every week. Wilkie is the defender in the interchange bench. He's been St Kilda's best defender all season and is a main reason why the defence has been so strong this year. He's averaging 20 disposals a game, which is significant for his position, and is equal second in intercept possessions a game, and 11th in intercept marks a game. His offence has also blossomed as he has career high numbers in metres gained and score involvements per game. So that is the best 22 of the season so far in my opinion. Obviously there's 10 weeks or so left in the season, so there's plenty of opportunity for players to switch. And I think this year compared to other seasons, it is very difficult, especially in the midfield, because there's been a lot of breakout seasons. So we'll see how much uh, this side changes uh, right now to the end of the season.